do it in different way. All right, so we are talk, going to talk today about uh, what are the different technologies for future. So before I go to the future, let's uh, dive a little bit back into the past and then present, then we'll go into the future. So most of you know, in India, people used to use a phone called Nokia phone and people used to use a camera called Kodak camera, Kodak paper, Kodak film, right? Those are the past technologies. And nowadays in 2022, no one is using the Kodak film or Kodak paper or Kodak camera. It's all gone. They are dead. Similarly, the Nokia phone is dead. So I'm talking about some technologies which were really flourishing like 10, 15, 20 years ago, but those technologies are doomed now. And the present day technologies, if I can talk about in terms of IT, because I'm from IT background. And uh, the IT technologies in present day are something like uh, Java programming, .NET programming, Python programming, and uh, the databases like uh, Oracle database or MongoDB or some other different databases, right? So those are the present day technologies. So the old 10 days technology, if you are expert in those technologies, for example, you are expert of a Nokia phone or Koda camera, no one is going to give you a job. You cannot sell that technology if you are a business man, right? Similarly, the technologies which are present today, if you are expert in those technologies, definitely you will have your bread and butter today, but those technologies might die soon. Again, you will become uh, out of job or you will not have the income what you have today. So if you look into the future in next 10, 20 or 30 years, next few decades, what are those technologies which we are going to see, our children are going to see, your juniors are going to see. I wanted to talk about those technologies today. So I'm trying to prepare you all for tomorrow. Right? So as I said, okay, one, one important point about today's uh, session, who are my audience today? So anyone who is student of a technology, for example, you are in third year of engineering, fourth year of engineering, and you want to do some project, you can get a lot of ideas for the projects today, right? And, uh, if you are a technology professional, for example, you have five, 10 years of experience, you are already working in technology industry and you wanted to know where the world is going towards and you wanted to upgrade yourself, today's session is for you. And the people who are technicians, for example, a person who is doing like AC repair or uh, uh, some kind of a electrical repair, electrician, plumber, those kind of people who wanted to upgrade themselves the session is for them today. And the people who are trying to get into PhD, they want to do some research, today's session is for them. And you or your parents or your elder brothers or someone is planning to do a business, you want to start a new business, you want to expand your business, today's session is for you. And you have like five crores, 10 crores of money in your hand. You want to start a big business. You want to establish a big industry. Today's session is for you. So these are the people I'm looking for today in my session. All others, it is up to you if you want to stay here. Otherwise, it's up to you if you want to leave. So these are my idea audience. I'm expecting you all to listen to today's session and ask any questions you have. And I hope I'm going to give you a lot of information because it is a huge information I'm trying to share today. So the agenda is, as I said, we want to know about the history. We have to learn lessons from the history. As I said, Nokia is the company which died and there was no mistake. They did nothing wrong, but they died. They are out of business today, right? Similarly, there, there was a BlackBerry, there, there was a Kodak, and any company, if they don't upgrade, they are going to die. 
and any technology if you don't upgrade yourself you will be out of job or out of business so you have to know about the history and you have to learn from the history and i'm going to talk a little bit about current technologies i'm not going to elaborate on that but most of my presentation will be on emerging technologies or future technologies or the technology trends in coming 2 3 decades little bit we'll talk about other domains but not too much and what are the challenges we'll talk in the end a little bit so as i said we'll talk about the history if you see i created some kind of a timeline of technology starting from 1831 till 2008 so these are the different technologies developed over the period of time i am not going to discuss in detail but these technologies are important even today for example electric electric generator was invented by michael faraday in 1831 all our technologies we are talking about today they require electricity without electricity nothing works no matter how you are generating the electricity electricity is required right so telephone is another technology television walkie talkie all these technologies are going to be used in future technologies so that's why i have um, there are so many things but i did not highlight all of them only few important things i have highlighted here these technologies will be used in future technologies right a little bit about current technologies as i said java or dot net or python these are the programming languages which are being used in 2022 in next 5 to 10 years definitely people are going to use them after that we don't know Uh, react angular or vue js these are the front end technologies being used and one other technology which is in demand was uh, oracle adf it might be there but it was there la last one year ago there are so many other technologies like ibm filenet app dynamics app development uh, recently i am hearing a lot about site reliability engineer so if you are trying to get into something Uh, new or trying to change your stream that is another thing you can explore but i cannot say that technology is going to be there after 20 or 30 years okay so these are the current technologies i'm talking about so let's talk about the emerging technologies or the future technologies so these are the simple bullet points i tried to create here uh, artificial intelligence coupled with uh, natural language processing nlp they go hand in hand and 5g is the latest technology right now but in future it might come 6 or 7g internet of things this is the one which is going to rule the world in next uh, 20 to 30 years iot and serverless computing biometrics ar vr blockchain robotics nano computing quantum computing uh, data analytics data science cyber security so these are the different things you might going you might be hearing in next 20 to 30 years from now so if you are trying to get into something in uh, exciting remember to get any of these things you will have a better future bright future even if you are a businessman even if you are a employee engineer or techno enthusiast right so let's talk about little bit of artificial intelligence so you might know something called uh, uh, customer service so for example your phone is not working you have bought a brand, brand new phone you call the customer service so what happens is they will say please enter your like model number or uh, serial number of your device otherwise you are calling uh, for example calling bsnl or airtel or uh, reliance or here in us it's verizon at&t when you call the customer service they will say enter your some pin number or your user username or your phone number some identification information like date of birth or zip code or pin code right once you enter that information the automated system is going to go through your account and say oh i know you you have an account so what is your problem explain 
So if you speak to that automated system, it is artificial intelligence. It is going to understand what you're talking about. And once you tell your problem, it is going to give you some solutions. You don't have to talk to a real person. That's the future. Going forward, that's what we are going to see more and more. That, that kind of a trend just started, but that trend is continuing going forward. So going forward, that's what we are going to see. And all these call centers we are seeing today, they are going to go away slowly. In 2004, I was working on a project. The project was, they had a call center and they wanted to replace that call center with online booking. So they, they used to book limousine over the world and anyone wants to book a limousine, they can just call the call center. People used to answer their phone and uh, they, they used to book the limousine over the phone. They realized that we are wasting a lot of money. They, we are giving a lot of salaries to the employees. So they hired us and we, one team, worked for one year and we created a website for them and they started booking online. Now they moved in 2022, they moved into an app now. So in app, you can book a limousine, right? So the call center is being replaced with a website. Now that call center is being replaced with this chatbot, which is artificial intelligence. So it, even in the chatting world, they are introducing these things. You can go online to any of this website and they'll say, do you need any help? You start typing you will get the answers, but those answers are coming from a chat bot. It's a bot, it's a robot. It is going to understand your problem, give you the solutions. It, it acts like a human, but on the other side, there is no human. So that's what artificial intelligence is. This artificial intelligence learns over the period of time, and it is going to perform as if there is a human, right? Uh, in e-commerce also, you will see the artificial intelligence, it learns. So every day you are browsing, they know what you are browsing and they are going to show advertisements related to your browsing. Even if you are listening to a song on YouTube, if you are listening songs of 1950 or 1970, it starts giving those songs to you every day. If you are uh, listening to news every day, it starts giving you the news from different sources. So it knows who you are and what is your preference that's what artificial learning is, uh, artificial intelligence. Is. It learns from you and it improves upon, right? In other example, I can say, uh, people used to apply for jobs and someone used to sit for each resume, they used to read the resume and they, then uh, they will decide which resume they have to pick up, right? But going forward, these resumes will be automatically scanned and it is going to recommend, oh, this person is the right candidate. Right? So that's what the future is. Similarly, in healthcare also, the AI is being used going forward. You don't have to go to doctor. You just have to tell, I have these, 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 these symptoms. It is going to ask questions. Do you have a fever? What is the fever? What is your BP? Based on all that information, it is going to suggest, okay, go and get this tablet. This is your prescription. It is going to give you the prescription. There's no real doctor on the other side, right? In supply chain also, there is an AI. So one example I can give is uh, this, this AI, which I'm talking about on supply chain, it is combination of AI, machine learning, and the data science, combination of three things. So what happens is it is going to check uh, when you go to a shop, in shop, what, what you're shopping. So if you are buying a bread, are you buying bread along with milk? If you are buying a bread, you are buying bread along with the uh, uh, eggs. So it is going to uh, track what people are buying together. So it is going to give a suggestion to the managers or business owners uh, what kind of uh, products they have to put in one place. For example, if you put one uh, eggs in one corner and uh, milk in another corner, there are pros and cons. The pro is people are going to browse through entire store to buy milk, milk and eggs. The other con is they might not buy uh, milk or eggs based on where they are because those two are sitting in two other corners. People think, oh, they, they are not selling the other product. 
right? So business owners can make a decision based on this AI. It, so it is combination of AI, machine learning, and also the data science, right? Uh, in sports also, they are going to use this uh, AI going forward. Right now also they are using, if you are watching cricket or something, it says, oh, this particular bowler, they did these many balls before, this is their history, and uh, in this particular ground, uh, this is how the bowling goes, this is how the batting goes, this is how the pitch is, today it is raining, so the, we are predicting these many runs. So it is going to do a lot of analysis based, based on the data, right? Uh, going forward, these uh, protocols, the communication between de devices, the best example I can give you is uh, in next 20 to 30 years, you don't see any car driven by humans. The cars are going to talk to each other and the cars are going to learn from other cars. Oh, the car next, the car next to me is uh, BMW. This because BMW is a, like, for example, it has a very good uh, uh, speed, with a lot of power. So it is going to go faster. I have to change the lane and I have to give the space for the BMW. So my car is slow car. I know what is my capacity. The other car is V6 engine, V8 engine. It is going to go faster. So I have to give the space. So it is going to make decisions based on what is the data available to you, right? So these are the different things. Uh, there are other examples like shoes, which are going to track the steps within the shoe. There will be a chip and that chip is going to tell, oh, today you have uh, uh, ran or you are walking these many steps and there will be a app in your phone. So the people who are on this uh, presentation today and listening to me and they wanted to start a business, you can start a business, you can start a company which is going to make shoes. You will have a chip embedded in the shoes and the chip is going to track your uh, walking or running and you will have an app in the phone. That app will going to show uh, how much I ran using those shoes, right? So that, that is one simple example. Uh, Amazon Alexa, Google Home, and all these devices are coming. Going forward, you will see more and more, and people are going to use that. The future generation is going to use that, right? So NLP is used in the AI, for artificial intelligence, they are going to use NLP. So it is going to do the voice recognition and other kind of recognition system, for example, heat sensors, water sensors. Uh, it is going to smell, for example, uh, if there is a something burning, that burning smell, it is going to detect and it is going to uh, send a signal to the management or the owners or whoever they are, right? Uh, text to speech, it is again NLP. In past, what they used to do is you have a movie and all the subtitles are already written in a text. And based on where you are in the movie, it is going to pull the text and show it to you on the TV. That is old and old and technology. Old and means like five, 10 years ago technology. The latest technology is as you speak, it is going to convert your speech into text. So that technology is already there right now, but it, they are improving it. It is trying to understand uh, more and more different dialects. And uh, as you go, it is going to learn more and it is going to act like a human as if there is a human who is uh, uh, typing uh, your uh, words as you speak, right? So that's what NLP is about. Uh, interactive voice response. So as I said, the customer service, right? You speak, it is going to understand what you're speaking. It is going to give you the response according to what you tell. Uh, the OCRs and uh, there's an optical scanner. So I don't know in India, people are using it or not. Uh, yeah, I, I'll come to Metaverse also, yes. So... <laughs> The optical scanner, uh, here in US, maybe it is there in India also, I don't know, but here in US, when I go to bank, 
I'm depositing the check from my phone. You take a picture, the check is deposited. What it will do, it is going to read the amount, read the account number, read the name and all that information written by hand. Even if it is written by hand, it is going to understand the numbers. It is going to deposit the check. Later, some human will come and verify, but initially it is going to read your check. Similarly, you have some document, uh, you want to convert the document, the paper into a text. You don't have to sit there and type it. In olden days, we used to have data entry operators. The, the job of data entry operator was to read the paper and type into a computer or a typewriter. But nowadays it's not required. You give me the paper, I'm going to scan through that paper, I'm going to convert that paper into a computer-based text, that's it. You don't really need a data entry operator. So those who are data entry operator, think about this in the next 10, 20, 10, 10 to 20 years, you'll be out of job, right? You're converting PDF to text, the same thing. Language translations, you just give me the language, it is going to translate. The translation is already there, but there is a lot of improvement required. That's where NLP is used, right? Uh, airport passport scan is an interesting thing. So what happens is your passport has a chip. I don't know in Indian passports, they already in, in, inserted a chip or not, but here the US passports have its own chip. When you are in the airport, you just pass through the airport, the devices is, are going to read your information and it is going to scan your face and recognize are you the same person or different person. If you are a different person, it is going to highlight some red signal and officers are going to come to you and say, come on side, we'll talk to you. Otherwise, the system is going to recognize your passport, your face, face recognition, everything is done. You can just walk through the airport. That's it. Right? Uh, th these are the different examples. Right? Uh, 5G is the future right now. But uh, in future, we might see 6G and 7G also. The important aspect of this 5G or 6G or 7G is they are trying to make the data transfer faster. Because in olden days, we used to have a wired network and wireless network. In wireless network, the speed was no fast. It was not as fast as the wired network. That's why if I am sending a video over a social media or WhatsApp or whatever, I am sharing my screen, there used to be a lag or delay, right? But going forward, this 5G is coming, which is a wireless technology, and you are going to get a faster data speed. Because of the faster data speed, the cars can talk to each other and give the way to automated driving cars as the best example who are going to use the 5G, right? Uh, the important part today's uh, presentation is this. This is the biggest highlight in my presentation today, IoT, Internet of Things. So I, I don't know how many devices you have used already, but uh, we started using some of those devices. For example, right now I'm sitting here and behind me there is a Wi-Fi controlled heating system. That Wi-Fi control heating system is going to tell me how is everything. In my phone, there is an app. The app is going to show me what is the current temperature. And I can increase the temperature or decrease the temperature for my phone itself. Right? And I have one other example. I have a TV in, in different room. I'm not, I'm sitting in a different room. I'm TV is in different room. I have an app that app is going to show me what my children are watching right now. I can increase the volume, decrease the volume, shut down the TV, everything I can do sitting where I am sitting, right? So that's one other example of Internet of Things, IoT. These all devices are connected to Wi-Fi and that Wi-Fi system is controlling all these things and the entire home is aware of each other. One other example I can give is one of my friends, 
he got a solar electrical system. So that solar electrical system is connected on his roof. It is going to generate the electricity, send it to his home. Inside his home, there is a system which is going to control who is consuming how much electricity they are consuming. The fridge is consuming how much? Washing machine is consuming how much? Dishwasher is consuming how much? And uh, the microwave oven, the electric oven, each area, each room, how much they are consuming the electricity. He is going to get the daily report, snapshot, everything from his mobile phone or mobile device, right? So th these are the things which are being used going forward. So instead of talking too much theory, I have given some examples also here. So to generate those kind of systems, if you are into a business, if you are doing some research, you have to learn C, C++ or Ruby, and it is going to use cloud. It is going to use embedded systems. You are going to write some device drivers, and you are going to use some communication systems. You are going to use some sensors, like electrical sensor, water sensor, water sensor, heating sensors. Those are the sensors you are going to use. You might use some kind of a programming language like Node.js or Python or Java. You are going to use some NoSQL or Mongo, some database. And th these are the different things you are going to use. If you are into a business, if you are a business owner, you can develop these kind of uh, technologies. Otherwise, you can import these technologies from other countries and you can sell in your market. So if you are into research PhD, you can do research and improve on existing devices. Otherwise, if you are a technology person, like for example, you are an electrician today, you can start exploring these devices and repair those devices or install those devices, troubleshoot those devices, right? So all these things you can do. That's why in the beginning itself, I said my session today is for a vast amount of audience, different set of audience, not just student, not, not for the jobs. You can be a businessman. You can be a te technical person. You can be a student. You can be a research like PhD person, right? So th these are the different things you can do uh, using this uh, IoT. And going forward, next 20 to 30 years, you will see more and more smart devices, smart uh, equipment, that equipment is aware of itself and that equipment is going to learn over the period of time. For example, I says I'm using heater right now. It is like four or five degrees centigrade here. So that heater is going to learn from me. Oh, every day I'm keeping the heater at 70 degrees centigrade, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is going to keep that temperature. I don't have to tell it every day. It is going to learn over the period of time what kind of temperature I really like it, right? And uh, to develop IoT, these are the different things you need. First, you have to develop an API, which is going to interact between different devices. And you are going to use some UI UX design for the, for example, you are developing an app, right? So that app, you have to understand what kind of UI you need, what kind of user experience you need, some kind of a mobile app development you need to, uh, understand the IT security, make sure no one is going to hack it, right? So th these are the all different things goes when you are talking about IoT, Internet of Things, right? But going forward, next 20 to 30 years, these are the technology ruling the world. Uh, serverless computing, this is again a new concept uh, being developed. The smallest simple examples are the Lambda of AWS, Graph Query Language, DynamoDB. These are the different things. So what they are trying to do is they are trying to uh, use the server side as less as possible because all the cloud going forward, everything will be in the cloud. There won't be any your own physical server. So you don't want to overuse cloud because cloud is you pay by use. So if you use for one hour, you are going to pay. Four hours, more you are, more money you are going to pay. One GB versus 10 GB, you are going to pay more. And how much bandwidth you are using, you pay more. So you are going to pay less. You are trying to improvise efficient way you want to use. 
So you have to go towards serverless computing. So this is a new concept coming up. Uh, biometrics. Uh, you might have already used some phones where you are going to use the fingerprint, but going forward, your uh, home doors, car doors, everything will be used using biometrics. Uh, you are going to use retina technology. When you do the Aadhaar card in India, they are going to take your retina. So similarly, once you take this retina or face recognition systems or thumb thumbprint re recognition systems and many different types of recognition systems, and you don't have to come home and take out the keys from your pocket and open the door. It is going to do face recognition system, temperature recognition system, smell recognition system. That is the future. So going forward, it is going to use all these things to uh, make your life easy, right? So going forward, if you are into a technology, try to get into these technologies. If you are a businessman, try to sell these business these in your businesses, and you will have your business thriving for the next 20, 30 years, right? Uh, AR, VR. So here is the metaverse we are talking about. So going forward, what's happening is uh, there is one specialist doctor sitting in Australia, one specialist doctor sitting in US. So you, are, you have some kind of a problem and you want to consult the specialist. You don't have to go out of your home to meet the doctor. The doctors are sitting somewhere in the globe, some corner of the world. They are going to get all your information, including your, uh, uh, they are going to see you as if you are sitting in front of them. And the doctors are going to see you in VR. It's a virtual reality your image will be visible to them and it will be in 3D form. So as if you are sitting in front of the doctor. So doctors are going to do the consultation, even they can do the surgery. So to do the surgery, the technicians will be on your side and those technicians are going to follow the directions of the doctor. And once they do the minimum thing, what they are supposed to do, the doctors are going to operate on you sitting somewhere in different country. So that's the future. So if you are into technology, try to do some research on this. If you are doing PhD, uh, if you are just engineer, you are trying to learn something, you can learn how these VR works and you can do some research on it. One other example of AR VR is you are going to do a field trip. So you are running a school and your school is remote. You are sitting in uh, Australia and your student is sitting in Malaysia. And that Malaysian student is learning about uh, cheetah. And you don't have to go to zoo to see the cheetah. The physical cheetah will be visible in front of that student in 3D form. And student is going to see as if the real cheetah is running in front of the student. So that's how the future is. You don't have to... Uh, Go to zoo to see the cheetah. That's the example. And 3D printing is coming. So around like three, four years ago, I think 2016 or 2014, uh, I was uh, visiting one, um, uh, some kind of a technology conference. So in the technology conference, they were showing how many different types of 3D printers are available and how they are being used. For example, a doctor has to do the heart operation, heart surgery. And you remember it's a really complicated process. They open the heart of the uh, patient, then they realize, oh, there is some problem here. And they cannot waste a lot of time and they have to make some decision there itself. Instead of that, this 3D printing is going to print the 3D structure of the heart by taking all the information from the patient and the doctors are able to see that 3D hurt and they can cut that hurt as if they are cutting the real hurt and they can go inside and see how everything is. So that, that's, that's where the 3D printing is really useful. There are so many different ways you are going to use 3D printing, but that is the future, right? But the planes they are going to use uh, AR, um, medical surgery, bottom hole surgery, the laparoscopy, endoscopy, all these things they are going to use AR. 
right? Engaging with machines. And one important thing recently people have heard is metaverse. So metaverse is a kind of a internet technology. In like 30, 40 years ago, there was no internet. No one was using internet, right? Today, everyone is using internet. You just go www, whatever the bank.com or flipkart.com, amazon.com. You are buying things online. That was not the case like 20, 30 years ago. So going forward in next 30 years, the metaverse is coming. So what metaverse is, you are sitting at home, the entire store, the Walmart or Reliance or any store appears in front of you as if you are walking in the store. It is going to show you all the products. It is going to show there is a diaper section, there is a soap section, liquid soap section, there is a vacuum section, TV section, all the sections you will see and you will pick up the things as if you are picking up from the shop, but it is VR. Everything is virtual. You are going to see them and you are going to buy them. So right now, as we speak, the Walmart and uh, Amazon are spending a lot of money, billions of dollars to develop this AR, VR technology to make these virtual shops. You will sit at home, you will see the shop as if it's a real shop. Similarly, if, it, if there is a conference, you don't have to be a real conference. Today we are talking, but we are not seeing each other. But going forward, I'm, I can see you all. I can read your expressions, what kind of expressions you are doing, <laughs> right? That's the, that's the metaverse. It is coming up soon in future. Uh, one other example I can give is uh, like four, six years ago, I went to California. There is a factory called Jelly Belly. So Jelly Belly is a fact, uh, small candy. They are making so many different varieties of candies. And all those candies are going to taste as if it's a real candy. For example, strawberry candy. It's not a real strawberry at all. It's not a real strawberry, but it tastes like a strawberry. They are going to use some kind of uh, uh, what you call uh, chemicals or lab developed chemicals. So you will feel as if you are eating real strawberry. So with this AR, VR, they are going to generate uh, some kind of a, uh, you will be able to sit at home and smell it. So you are ordering something. Generally what happens if I go to a mango shop, I'll smell it. Oh, this mango is good. This mango is not good by, by, by just smelling it, I can tell. So that smell they can generate in VR. You are able to see it. Oh, this is good. I like it. This is not good. I don't like it. Right? Uh, similarly, restaurant menus. You go to a restaurant and you are trying to order something, but you don't know how it looks like. So it is going to generate a 3D image in front of you. And then you can say, I like it. I don't like it. Right? So these are the simple examples where this AR VR is being used in next 20 to 30 years. Uh, blockchain is another thing, which is a kind of a database. Uh, here again, I'm giving some technology examples like Golang, Solidity, Graph Query Language, TypeScript, Scala. So these technologies they are using to develop the blockchain. The blockchain is being used in right now for this uh, cryptocurrency, but going forward, they, they are planning to use for the transaction management, supply chain, secure transactions and all those things. There's another technology, the robotics. Robotics is one other technology coming up in next uh, two to three decades and everything will be robot. For example, in my home, I'm going to have a vacuum cleaner. The vacuum cleaner knows there is a sofa in my home. In first one week or first few days, it is going to learn there is a sofa. It is not going to hit the sofa again and again. Every day it goes to and hit the sofa, no. It knows there is a sofa, it is going to avoid the sofa and the dining table and there are some chairs, right? So how it is going to do that? Again, it you have to go back to the machine learning and artificial intelligence and data science. It is going to learn over the period of time what kind of furniture I have in my home and it is going to do the vacuum and clean the floors based on what is what kind of furniture I have at home, right? Uh, selenium testing, another example of automation. 
but going forward, they are going to develop more and more automation for robotics. Uh, you might have seen some videos where the pizza delivery is happening. Uh, no person comes, a drone comes and drops the pizza in front of your home. That's all. So that's what the robotics is going forward. Uh, one biggest example uh, uh, how the robotics being used is in harsh environment. For example, you have uh, some lava is coming out of uh, a mountain, right? So what happens? It is really dangerous place. You cannot just physically go there. In olden days, like 20, 30 years ago, people used to go to these uh, mountains and uh, they have uh, received uh, uh, harsh injuries, right? Uh, one other example I can give is, uh, what is it, uh, the, the car. So in car manufacturing company, they have to paint the car and the paint is hazardous. It's not good for health. If robot is doing the painting, there is no hazard, right? It can do the painting and it can do better painting than human, but in hazardous places, you can send the robots and do the work. Uh, you can do the reporting of uh, the lava, how much lava, what kind of lava, what kind of chemicals it is emitting, uh, when it is going to end, is it peak or not, all that information you can collect using the robots. And in agriculture also, they are going to use uh, one, one funny example I can give is the Chaiwala robot. In government office, uh, you don't have to have a human coming to uh, officer and giving the uh, tea. For example, all the IAS officers are sitting and they are doing some meeting and a tea person comes and he's going to listen the confidential information. But if you have a machine sub, uh, giving serving the tea, the machine can come and serve the tea. It is not going to listen any confidential information, right? Uh, food preparation robot. Uh, you might have seen that video. Uh, a person or you, your mom is going to cook very good food and you like it. So what kind of ingredients she is using and when she is adding those ingredients to your food, all that thing you can uh, copy and robot is going to do from tomorrow onwards, right? Uh, here in uh, US, a lot of people are using a machine called Rotimatic. You might uh, do Google and you can find out. It looks like a printer. You just pour some uh, flour, you pour some water, oil. That's it. It is going to mix. It is going to make a roti, bake the roti, give it to you, and you can decide what kind of roti you want. Right? So these are the different uh, robotics. Uh, nano and quantum computing is the future. Next two, three decades, you are going to see this. Uh, one simple example I can give the nano is uh, they are going to inject a small nano machine in your veins. It is going to go inside your body and it is going to see uh, what kind of uh, problems you have. For example, you have some heart issue. It is going to go inside your heart and see whether there is a blockage or whether there is some kind of a blood clot or there is a uh, some kind of a fat, how much fat, what kind of a fat, all those things it can do. Even it can do there's some repair also, right? Uh, data science, as I was telling in previous slides also, it is going to be used in AI and ML. Uh, another concept called internet of behaviors, right? As I said before, you go to a shop, you are going to buy milk along with the, with the bread or eggs along with the bread, milk, milk and eggs, egg and milk, what combinations you are buying. So it is going to see your behavior, your browsing behavior, right? Uh, you might be using the Google these days. What is happening? You type something, it is going to tell the next word. For example, I am sending a, a letter to John. So when I say hi, it immediately says hi, John. Because in the email address, there is a John. It, take, it takes that John and it is going to show you, it is up to you whether you are, you are going to use it or not, right? So the data science is storing the information about you, your behavior. Uh, as I said, uh, I'm coming to home every day so there is a face recognition system, voice recognition system. It is going to recognize my voice. 
how many different variations I'm going to speak. Sometimes I'm louder, sometimes I'm speaking slowly, and sometimes I have some kind of a cough or uh, cold, and my voice is different. It is going to learn all those patterns. It is going to save all those patterns in the database, and it is going to pull back next time to compare it is you who is speaking. Voice recognition system, face recognition system, uh, this Google Analytics, as, as I said, passport uh, scan, all those things, they are going to use the data science, right? So when we are talking about all these technologies, the important part is the security. We have a problem called hacking. In olden days, people used to hack the computers. And uh, these days, they are hacking our mobile phones. They are hacking our bank accounts. So going forward, these hackers are going to hack these all automated systems. The automated car, which is running on the road, if hacker is going to hack, there will be an accident. Otherwise, the car is going to reach a different destination. The pizza is being delivered by a robot will be delivered in different location, right? So you have to secure all these devices, then comes the cybersecurity, right? You have to train the employees and safeguard the servers, softwares, workstations, smart devices, something called, uh, right now, in olden days, in software engineering, there was software testing, manual testing. Now we have automation testing. So going forward, more emphasis will be given on penetration testing. They want to make sure whatever the software you are developing is uh, secure and no one can hack it, right? So what different technologies uh, comes under cybersecurity are uh, identity and access management, SSO, SMTP, um, different types of uh, policies and procedures, identity theft, social engineering, so cybersecurity itself is a big uh, area going forward. So in next what, 20 to 30 years, cybersecurity is a big thing. If you are a business person, you can develop some software which is going to uh, trap the hacks or find out the hacks, or you can do some kind of a hacking business where some software being developer, you can do the testing and certify them. Uh, this is uh, uh, safe software safe to use software, digital certificates. But if you are doing research, you can do some research on how to prevent the hacking, how to make secure, um, how to make sure there are backups and all those things, right? Uh, the other domains in the future will be solar photovoltaic installers, wind turbines, uh, home health aids. You might have seen these days, everyone is getting a COVID testing kit. So you can test yourself at home. You don't have to go to lab and do the testing, right? So those kind of things will become common going forward. Uh, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, statisticians. Statisticians is a big area we recently realized. Uh, earlier also there used to be statisticians, but uh, rarely we know what is their importance. But after COVID, we understood how many COVID cases are there, in which age group, in which area, which city, which region, which state. So all that information is being used to predict the future. So statisticians are going to play a big role going forward. Uh, there are some challenges in the world. So everyone needs electricity. All these devices need electricity. So they are trying to find out what other ways they can develop uh, electricity solar electricity, wind electricity, even in hurricanes, they are trying to use that hurricane uh, energy to develop uh, electricity. So there is no end. They are even trying to make a human brain. And one other important uh, issue with all these devices are most of them are mobile devices. They need a battery and they need a smallest battery, the compact batteries, right? So that's it. any questions you have, I try to rush through. We completed in one hour. You have any questions, you can unmute. Otherwise, you can type questions here. There's one link here. I'm trying to 
I'll open that link. Uh, I'm sharing the whole screen, right? You are able to see my browser? Yes, we can see you. So is it the question and answer session for CY right now? Yeah, before I go to question answer, I want to show one website. Okay, okay. So I works. give the right to everyone to talk to you directly. Just, mm -hmm. okay. So if you see my screen, I'm showing one website. You see there's a beautiful pie chart here. Right, this pie chart is going to show you those who are into technologies, they are trying to learn what is coming in the future. Come here to this website and look for what technologies are coming in the future. The technologies which I'm using in my office today, those technologies were listed on this website five to 10 years ago. So whatever the technologies you see on this website today, those technologies are going to come in future. So for example, if I see there's a fast lane here, right? This fast lane is a technology which is being used right now, but in, in future, they are going to use more and more. But some of these technologies, what you see on this website, they might die soon, we don't know, but which, the technologies which we are using today right now, those technologies appeared on this website five to 10 years ago. Okay, let's go to the questions now. You can unmute and ask. Gaming is still there. So uh, five to 10 years ago, there was gaming. Today also there is a gaming. The difference is in 10 years ago, the gaming was on specially built gaming computers. But today the gaming is mostly on uh, mobile devices. So, so people are playing all the games on the mobile devices and these games are going to learn from you and they are trying to make smarter themselves. It's again AI, artificial intelligence is being used in the game, right? Hi, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, right. How we can approach uh, right expert who can help us develop AI-based mobile app or can help with the uh, meta technology? 